So here's an intriguing question that I guess nobody asked before, or at least nobody investigated scientifically. Of almost 300 moons in the solar system, why is it that none of them seem to actually have any rings? Even moons that should have rings technically, because of, for example, geological activity, or because of the amount of stuff they emit from things like cryovolcanoes. And while it looks like, for the first time ever, someone actually didn't just ask this question, they've conducted a scientific study, potentially provide us with a very intriguing answer. And so, hello full person, this is Anton. In this video, we're going to try to answer this question as well, by focusing on a study from Mario Sukarkia and his team, with a simple title, The Missing Rings Around the Solar System Moons. And by itself, this is an intriguing question, mostly because of what we've discovered in the last few decades, and specifically, rings around so many other objects in the solar system. Now, obviously, four of the main planets have rings, but today scientists believe that even planets like Mars, Earth, and very likely Venus and Mercury potentially had rings before too, based on previous collisions with very large asteroids, or in the case of planet Earth, with a planet we call Theia, and that's of course the collision that eventually produced the Moon. But before the Moon, Earth most likely possessed rings as well. And for planets like Mars, it might even reacquire rings when one of its moons gets really close and becomes tidally disrupted by the Martian gravity. There was even a lot of evidence for the past Martian rings explored in the study right here that we've discussed in one of the videos that should be somewhere below. Moreover, we know that even asteroids tend to have rings as well. For example, here's a simulation of what we think Chariklo looks like. And well, here too you can see there seems to be a set of rings detected a few years back. Here this was discovered by observing Chariklo pass in front of a distant star, which essentially created unusual dips on both sides that can only be explained by a ring. And even dwarf planets seem to contain them as well. Here's the famous potato-shaped Haumea and the much more mysterious Quawar. And so a lot of different types of objects seem to possess rings for one reason or another. Yet why no moons? With almost 300 moons around various planets, and even more moons orbiting other objects, including objects like Pluto, we expect at least maybe one of them to contain something. Yet so far, there seems to be nothing at all. And intriguingly, this idea was actually started by exploring something entirely different. Back in 2021, there were a lot of studies in regards to the potential discovery of an exomoon, or basically a moon outside of the solar system, known as Kepler 1625 b1. Here this was some kind of a giant exoplanet that several studies proposed contained an exomoon. But not just any exomoon, a giant exomoon, with a mass close to Neptune, at least based on its size. And though this discovery is still kind of controversial and has not been officially confirmed yet, if correct it would suggest an existence of an unusual giant moon that seems to defy expectations. But in 2021, the team behind this recent study propose something else. They actually propose the idea now known as Chrono Moon, from the Greek Chronos for Saturn because of what they might contain. And so here the explanation was that this was not a large moon, this was actually just a moon containing very large rings. And so because of these Saturn-like rings, it would just appear much larger than it actually is. And here this explained pretty much everything, including the unusual size, without violating anything we know about how moons and how planets form. But there was obviously a small problem. If this chrono moon had rings, and if obviously these rings can form in this star system, here we still have that other question. Why no rings in a solar system? None of the moons in a solar system, even the ones really far away from everything, seem to contain rings. And because there's a lot of raw material everywhere that should allow moons to form rings, this actually was a really unusual mystery. For example, we know that some moons are entirely covered in craters. Well, actually, the best example here is our own moon. Lots of craters everywhere. And during these collisions, a lot of the impact ejecta, in theory, should form a ring pretty easily. On the other hand, some moons have a lot of cryovolcanism, ejecting lots of different vapors around itself. Yet here, there's also no rings. And so what's really happening here? Well, one obvious answer is that maybe the planets just have so much gravity that they destabilize everything, and are just maybe a little bit too influential for any rings to form around any moon. But this is of course just a hypothesis. To test this though, researchers decided to conduct n-body simulations just to see what they create 
and if any moons can form rings in the process. And well, it turns out that the simulations here show that rings should be possible. You can actually see them as these unusual gray circles around each moon. But because of the planetary influence, there is a kind of a stability threshold that most moons seem to not meet. Which is why so many moons, instead of acquiring their own rings, end up actually forming rings around the main planet. Here's a very famous example of Saturn. And in this case, this is the E-ring formed by the particles from Enceladus. Here it ejects various water and ice particles, which basically form one of the rings around Saturn, instead of forming the ring around the moon. And so at least for some of these moons, the answer seems to be pretty obvious. The planet just has too much gravitational pull. Or in more scientific terms, the moon is just a little bit too close to the Roche limit of the host planet. But some moons, like here we see Mimas, in theory are in a location where they should be able to have something, some kind of a small ring or something resembling a ring. Yet here, as you can see, no rings either. And so initially this led the scientists to assume that, well, maybe all rings around all moons basically just become unstable over time. But if so, we should have some evidence somewhere. Yet intriguingly, in their simulations, they seem to get a completely different result. The simulations representing millions of years seem to produce structures that seem to be kind of stable. And this is even for moons in somewhat hostile environments that seem to have a lot of neighbors or were orbiting close to giant planets. Intriguingly, in many cases here, a lot of these rings were also somewhat unusually shaped, producing very bizarre wavy structures and all sorts of patterns that usually are not visible around planets. And so if their simulations suggested that the rings should be possible and should actually be stable, here we once again are faced with that original question. Why is it that in real life we still don't see anything? And well, it turns out that the answer is really simple. Wrong place, wrong time. Or basically we're just observing this at a time when no rings seem to exist anywhere, even though they should. For example, almost 15 years ago, Cassini spacecraft found unusual evidence of material orbiting Rhea, one of the Saturn's moons. But here the amount of particles suggested that this was just a remnant of a ring and was only detected because the spacecraft passed directly through it. So this was some kind of a debris disk that measured several thousand kilometers, the last remnant of any ring around any moon in the solar system. Likewise, we know that the Saturn's moon Iapetus has a very unusual ridge running along the equator that appears as if something fell on top of the moon and basically resembles some kind of a ring remnant. And this by itself is actually not surprising at all because this is exactly what's happening to Saturn itself. Technically, we're super lucky to see rings of Saturn because this is an extremely temporary event. Here the rings themselves are slowly dissipating into the gas giant and are going to be completely gone in millions of years in the future. And so here the conclusion from the study is that, well, we seem to have gotten lucky with Saturn being able to see its moons, but we just got unlucky with the moons. All of the moons have either lost the rings or have not reacquired rings yet, with only one moon in the solar system, Rhea, showing signs of a remnant still in its orbit. But because there's so much pressure from the Sun, so much interaction with additional moons nearby and the planet itself, and even things like magnetic fields, all of this eventually breaks apart any ring until it's replaced by something else in the future. And so scientists behind the study are pretty convinced that in the past, billions of years ago, quite a lot of moons very likely had rings, and possibly even most moons, mostly because of the way they can form through various collisions with, for example, a large asteroid. And so naturally here this suggests that quite a lot of rings very likely ended up on the surface of various moons, with I guess only one moon, Iapetus, showing distinct visible signs. But here the more interesting question is, what about our own moon? The assumption here is that it also had rings at some point, but it would be very interesting to find out what happened to its remnants and did it mostly end up on the surface of the moon or landed on planet Earth. And so at the moment we obviously have no additional answers, but at least we have an answer for this somewhat intriguing hypothetical question. So why no rings around the moons? Well, we're just looking at it at the wrong time. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or someone discovers something else really unusual about some kind of a chrono moon out there. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. 
Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.